Hi and welcome to this short video tutorial which aims to address one of the problems associated with uh, upcycling furniture. And that is how to find good quality furniture on a regular basis. I mean most people start off upcycling their own furniture in their own home, then they perhaps get some off friends or, or Facebook, but to actually have a successful business you need a regular supply of good quality furniture. The answer to that problem is auctions. Now most people are a bit trepidatious about going to auctions. I think they get they think if they scratch the nose or look the wrong way they're suddenly going to end up buying something and it's not like that at all. Now to find auctions near you the best thing to do is just do a Google search. Just put auction houses near me and it'll come up with a number of auctions because wherever you are in the country you'll be fairly close to an auction. Auctions fall into several categories. Some are what they class as general auctions, uh, and that's where there's things like house clearances, um, job lots of stuff that's come from clearances, um, and that's a reasonable place to, to start to get some furniture. There's other auction houses that do specialist auctions, whether that's stamps or military or indeed furniture. Uh, and there's also auctions that specialise in, in high-end antique type auctions which aren't really suitable for what we're, we're going to be talking about. So once you've found an, an auction house that's, that's near to you, what, how do you actually go about it? Well, they'll have a web page and, and on there it'll give all the details of what days they're on, what hours and days you can view, uh, and what time the actual auction starts on the day. They usually have catalogues, some will include photographs, others it will just be a typed list of the items that are, that are for sale. So what you really need to do is to go along and view. So select the, one of the viewing days, get along there and have a good mooch round. Make notes of the lots that you might be interested in, and if there are some, then you probably want to go and, go and bid on them later. So the first thing to do is you need to register at the auction house. You'll probably need some proof of uh, where you live, so a driving license, something like that would be handy to have with you. Uh, register there, and they'll, some auction houses give you a bidding number, others you just give your surname when you actually bid on something and they keep a record. Most of these auctions will do a variety of things. Obviously if you're primarily interested in the furniture that's what you look at. But they'll have pottery, jewellery, electrical items, fridges, freezers. So you know you'll be able to restock your own home as well as your business. When you go viewing don't be shy about moving a piece of furniture around, pulling it out, checking it all over to make sure that there isn't any damage. Uh, most auctions, uh, most items at auction are sold as seen, um, so any damage or whatever, it's there for viewing. It's up to you to make sure that there isn't anything that's disastrously wrong, shall we say. I mean, you'll be well aware of your own skills at doing repairs as to what you could actually conceivably tackle. What I normally do when I go along viewing is I take a tape measure, because furniture has a nasty habit of growing in size once you get it out of the auction room. They're generally large warehouse type rooms and the furniture you think, oh yeah, that'll just fit in that gap, or yeah, that's just the right size for my car. But trust me, they get bigger when you take them out the door. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it does. So take a tape measure, make sure you're fully aware of what size car, what size vehicle you've got to, to get the, the item out of the auction afterwards. Um, so measure it. I usually take a torch as well because some of them are quite dark and you might want to look around the back of some and it's a bit dark. So I usually have a little pocket torch as well. Uh, I also do some jewellery buy-in, so I take a set of small jewellery scales because obviously the weight of gold is important, and I take an eyeglass for things like all marks or whatever. With your furniture, you want to check for, for damage, any 
repairs that may have already been done on it. You want to check for things like woodworm, loose joints. Um, if it's a chest of drawers, pull all the drawers out because quite often maybe the bottom of the drawer might be missing, which you would have to repair. Uh, anything like lifting veneer, which is slightly more complicated repairs. Um, if something's been varnished but it started to come off, there's a lot of sanding and time involved, so be aware of that. Uh, some pieces may be, may be heavily waxed, uh, so if you're thinking of painting the furniture, you know, you, you're really going to have to strip it back. So it's all time and labour, which you have to take into account. The, there's, there's what, what I class as good types of um, damage, because if you're upcycling, you're going to be painting things like ring marks on the top, uh, fading if it's been put in the sun and the top's faded a little, all those things if you're upcycling and you're going to be painting them don't matter to you, but they will put off other buyers. The private buyer wants something that's pristine, uh, uh, a furniture dealer doesn't want to have time and effort tied up in, in doing those things because that's detracting from their price. So they're things I look out for because I know that I'm going to get it for a good price and it really doesn't matter once I've sanded and painted. Uh, the, I mean the competition really is, is going to mainly mean the dealers and they will only bid up to a price that they know they can get a mark up on. So they're not going to bid the top money because they still need their margin and they're not really interested in repairing or, or upcycling anything. Uh, the other type of competition is the private buyer. What you don't want to do is get in a bidding war with a private buyer because they want that particular thing and they'll bid until they win it. So you have to be careful of the private buyers. The other things to uh, to bear in mind is that the price that you, you bid when they're going up, you have to add commission onto that. Uh, on the websites of all the auction houses, they will state what their commission is. Uh, it could be anywhere between 15 to 20 to 25 percent. And on used items, you don't pay VAT, but you do pay VAT on the commission. So if it, their auction uh, commission is 20 percent, you'll pay VAT on that, which is 25 percent. So it'll end up at being 25 percent because the VAT on 20 percent of something is an extra 5 percent of it. So it'd be 25 percent. So if you bid in 100 pounds, you'll end up paying 125 simple as that. The other things to bear in mind if you bid in is set a realistic price that you're happy with. Don't set your, your you know, what you want to pay, you want it as, as cheap as possible, but if you don't set a realistic price you probably won't end up winning anything. And try and stick to that with a little bit of leeway because it's very easy to get carried away. You get into bidding fever, somebody's bidding, you're bidding against them, and it's very easy to, to start overpaying, which cuts down the margin. Uh, and the other thing to do is don't get carried away and start buying every lot that you wanted, because you've got to put them somewhere, you've got to store them somewhere, you've got to keep them. So it's very easy to sort of overstock if you're not, if you get overexcited. On the actual day you turn up again, there's usually viewing before the auction, but there'll be a set time that will start. Normally the, the average I would say auctions that I've come across is about 120 lots per hour, which means it's moving quite fast. That's only 30 seconds for every single lot. Some will be slightly longer if there's lots of bidding on it. Other items may only have one or two bids and it'll go through quite quick. So you really have to pay attention. Don't sort of nod off <laughs> and start thinking about other things because it's very, very easy to miss your lot if you're not 
careful. Now, another thing to do is when he actually offers your lot for sale, he'll usually read out the description and then be looking for a first bid. And the first thing he'll say is a relatively high price, maybe where they expected to end up. But don't sort of leap in at that point because normally he'll say, who give me 50, who give me 50? He'll look around, nobody's doing it. So he'll start, start me at 10 or start me at 20. So you need to wait for that point before you jump in, otherwise you'll you'll be jumping in too high uh, and limit your your profit margin. What else? Uh, yes, when, once he starts taking bids off people, uh, also bear in mind that he can only take auction bids off of two people that are bid against each other. So if he's already in and, and some two people are already sort of bidding away. There's no point in putting your hand up and jumping in because he, he can't take your bid. Um, normally they're pretty good and they'll come back to you once those two people have finished their little fight. Um, but, but basically you just wait. And once, once he's finished with those two people, it, it, it'll only look around the room maybe one more time before he'll drop the hammer. So if you are still interested in that item, be prepared that once one of the people stops bidding to, to raise your hand. Now, in terms of actually bidding, uh, some people, I don't know why they do it, but the, the, the auction regulars, some raise an eyebrow or twitch the nose or twitch their ear or whatever. But really, there's no need to do that. If you're interested in an item, get your bidding number or, or your card or the, your notebook that you've made your notes in and just raise it. Raise it up high. Let him see, let him know you're interested. Once you've caught his eye, he won't leave you. You know, he'll know you're there, he'll know you're bidding, and he'll take bids off other people and come back to you. But clearly raise, get get in the game. Don't don't worry about twitching your nose and putting bids in, because it doesn't happen. So once you've got his attention, then as he comes back to you, he'll, he'll look at the other person, they might bid, and they'll come back to you, and 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 you know indicate whether you want to bid again at that point you can just nod your head or you can raise your card again uh, and and it'll be back and forth like that if you reach the point where you want to drop out it'll come back to you and then just clearly shake your head let him know that you've finished you're done if you win it of course then he'll, he'll probably ask for your either your name if it's that way on or he'll ask for your number so just Clearly hold your card up with your number on so he can see it. That's just all good etiquette. And the other thing is, you know, generally auctions, they like to keep the noise down. If some people start talking to each other, it can very get very hard to actually hear what he's saying. So don't go along for a chat, basically. Uh, right. Now, let me see what else I've got on my little list of things to mention. Right, so if you if if you've won the item at auction, then generally there'll be a, there'll be a window where you you go and pay. Once you've finished your number of lots, you go and pay. Generally, at auctions furniture is is generally the last items up uh, in the day because they don't want people trying to drag out big bits of furniture while the auction's going on. But you go to the window and pay, and generally they have a time period when you can collect it. Sometimes they're after the auction ends, till the end of the day, you can collect then, or it's the next day, or it's the next day. But there will be a time limit to when you can actually collect your, your, your items. If you leave them there after that time, they may start charging you storage because they need to get the, the auction room cleared for the next one. So bear that in mind that whatever you buy, you need to remove from the auction within a set period. Some auctions run every week, maybe even twice a week in some places, but generally once a week. Others are, are every fortnight and some are just once per month. Um, so 
there's always another chance so if you don't get what you want at the price you want don't worry there'll always be another chance now sometimes it's not possible to actually go and bid yourself or it's not economical because if you've taken a day or half a day to go and view and then you're going back for the auction it can be two days that you're tying up there are more and more auctions that do bidding online uh, so we'll cover that next now the easiest way i can probably show you about bidding online is to actually show you bidding online so i'll just remove me to uh, a corner somewhere you bear with me while i sort out the technology over there out the way there we go and we'll open up a computer window there we go there we go i hope you'll be able to see that let me make it a little bit bigger Right, there are a number of uh, online auction sites that work with all most of the major auction houses. Um, there is one called thesaleroom.com, uh, which is probably the one that we'll go and have a look at. There's also one called uh, Easy Live, which is also a very good one. Uh, they tend to cater for different markets. The sale room uh, is international but I think they've got nearly 400 auction houses in the UK on board and Easy Live is primarily UK based with a little bit of overseas. Uh, they tend to deal with the, uh, what's the best way of putting it, the, the, the cheaper end of the market. The, the, the less well known, the slightly smaller auction houses, I guess they charge them less commission so that's why they attract that type of auction. Um, but both are worth worth a, a look at. Um, we'll look at the saleroom.com, I think it's probably the first one to look at. Uh, it's a nice thing there on me. First in my list of items. So we'll click on that. And once you've actually found the saleroom.com, the first thing you will have to do is uh, if you want to bid, is to register with them. Um, obviously, I'm already registered. Uh, Miss Paintlot, who's in painting in the background, <laughs> is uh, is is also registered. Um, so, if you're registered with them, what you do is you give them your name and address, uh, and you have to give them a, a credit card or a debit card details, because it's once you bid at any auction, whether it's online or actually there, it is a legally binding contract. Once you bid on something, you can't change your mind, pull out, don't pay, etc. So you have to register the card with them. Um, they won't take any payment off it uh, unless you've not paid for an auction item after a couple of days. Um, generally you'd pay either in cash or with your card at the auction house when you go to collect. Um, but you do need your details to register. Once you've registered, then you have uh, you, you, you log in with your details, uh, and you have a, a special place called My Sale Room on the saleroom.com, and in that you can add all your favourite auction houses, um, and it's where you'll find all your previous bids and things that you may have added to to your watch list. But we'll cover that in a minute. Now what you can at the sale room, they have a, uh, up at the top left as you can see it says auctions and in there is current auctions and there are auctions that are actually live as we speak. Uh, we can click on that and have a see what auctions are, are live. Uh, as you can see these ones there in Burns, Hampton and Littlewood. I've no idea where they are, um, but if I was to click on the details it would tell me. But, uh, uh, also in the auctions is the auctioneers uh, and that is a alphabetical list of all the auctioneers that they've got on their website 
It says we've got 328 in the UK, four in Australia, four in Austria, four in Belgium, and one in Canada. Now, if you've already found out the names of the auctions, obviously you can go straight to them and find where they are. But there isn't any search on that other than an alphabetical list. So a, a, a little tip is, if you go to the top thing, it's got categories of auction items. Presuming that you're primarily interested in furniture, if you click on that, it says they found 13,200 items matching the search for, well, it says Möbelstück, but that presumably is furniture in another language. Uh, so, and now it gives you a location, so you can select within a certain distance of where you are, whether that's 10, 25 or 50. Uh, we live quite rurally, so generally our mind's set to 50 miles because it's 20 miles to the nearest town, so you need to spread your wings a little more. But, but most people, I would say, were 25 miles. So with a reasonable distance to get in view, it's not going to take you too long, it's not going to cost you too much in fuel to get there, so that's probably a reasonable range to set. Now you can either enter the your town name or your postcode and it'll pull up all the ones in that area. Uh, if we were to pick somewhere, say pool, we could put pool in. That's where Paula lives. That's why I picked it. Oh. <laughs> I thought I'd pick it and then... Uh, I'm having a conversation with Paul at the minute. I, uh, right. Uh, and then I'm going to apply the filter to them results. And it's found 1,012 items matching furniture within 25 miles of pool, which is in Dorset. Uh, and if you you can either go straight to the items and have a look at them all, or if you scroll to the bottom, it uh, gives you the auctioneers that that have got those items. So it's another quick, short way of finding out which auctioneers are in your area. Uh, in that area, we have Bulstrode's auction rooms, Clark's auction rooms at Semley, Duke's, Netherhampton sale rooms, and Semley auctioneers. So that's five within 25 miles of, of pool, so there is plenty of choice. If you just wanted to scroll through them items, you, you can do that. Or if you want a particular auction to see auction house to see what they've got, then, then go to one of those. So uh, let's say Bullstrode's, see what they've got to offer us. Uh, they've got... Uh, it's coming up with 235 items of furniture at Bulls Road in their next auction, which is it's obviously a two-day auction because it says the 10th to the 11th. You can either just look at the furniture, but I always find it's best to look at the old catalogue and then you never know what you might find. You know, there's always pieces of jewellery for birthdays, there's always electrical items. There's boxes that you can rummage through, which is my favourite thing to do, because I'm a skip rat. Uh, and if we go to, uh, let's say, that first item, give you a basic description. It says, a reproduction mahogany lattice glazed bookcase standing on bracket feet two foot wide. That's a very good description. When you go to some auction sites, uh, auction pages, they have a very scant description. They would have probably just put glazed bookcase, or maybe even just bookcase. They certainly wouldn't have given you the width and the dimensions. Um, so that's, that's a particularly good description. They have a photo of them. If you click on that, it goes large. You can zoom in and out. Uh, and actually see the, the item in detail, uh, which gives you a good clue before you go viewing. I'd always recommend to view. Uh, sometimes I don't, because I'm capable of doing repairs on items, treating woodworm or whatever, but I'm not especially bothered if there is a little bit of damage. I don't do it very often, but it, sometimes it's more economical and not worth my time and money to get to view, so sometimes I bid, but generally my advice would be to always view, particularly when you're starting out. And 
you may not quite know what you're looking for so it's always best to to get in there now on that item you can it's got uh, some auction sites have estimates others don't uh, on this one I see that they, they don't have any estimates and they've got an opening price of two pounds that's generally where the the bidding will start now on these sites you can actually place a bid before the auction even starts if you want if you see an item and you want to get in there early you can do you can on this page you can enter your maximum bid now and place the bid now if you put in a maximum bid it doesn't mean that it'll automatically take that straight off if you if it's open at prices at two and you put in 30 most auction houses will then start the bidding at that and increment it up and if it stops at 12 that's what you'll get it for you you're not automatically putting 30 pounds in that's just what your maximum you're willing to pay on this you can also uh, down where it says Bullstrode auction rooms you can visit their website or you can click on favorite if you click on favorite it'll then add that to, to that your sale room area so that you won't need to search for Bullstrode next time it'll automatically be there and you can also set email notifications so it'll send you an email the next time there's a catalog comes up I'm not familiar with this auction because obviously it's the other end of the country from me. Uh, also, if you go to, let me find this, uh, the Bullstrode Auction Room tab, that's the actual details of the auction, that particular auction that that furnishes in. Uh, they're in Christchurch in Dorset. Uh, they also generally have you the button where it says view catalog and above it is one that says connect to auction now you always need to connect to an auction to to bid you can't just sort of turn up or oh, i'll click on that and bid because you have to actually connect they have to approve you to bid on that auction now a lot of auction sites a lot of the auction pages automatically get set you. You don't need to do anything else. You'll just click on connect to it and it'll automatically come back saying you're approved to bid. And once you've been approved to bid, then obviously you can you can go in there and bid on the day when the actual auction's live. Some take a little bit longer. Uh, sometimes it comes up with a thing saying the, the, the auctioneer may contact you first because they, they want to actually verify that you, you're within the area, you know, you, you are going to turn up and pay. Um, there's nothing to stop you with bidding to items the other end of the country. That's perfectly fine too. But you're still doing to collect it. Some auction sites, uh, pages, companies, offer a, a delivery service, a packing service. Um, it can be relatively expensive. Obviously, if you want to ship a wardrobe around the country, it's going to cost you a lot of money. <laughs> but for some of the smaller items like jewelry you know they'll pay they'll pack it for you they'll pop it in an envelope they'll send it by insured post it'll still cost you a bit of money but it's probably less than going to pick it up if it's a reasonable distance so that's also worth bearing in mind when you actually uh, click on that particular auction It'll let you the page and that's the entire lot of items will come up that are in that auction. In that particular auction there are 853 items. So that's why you can see they, they do get a move on when they start going. 120 lots, I mean some are even 150 which is really motoring. But they have a lot of, lot of lots to get through. A lot of, lot of, lot of lots to get through so they, they will move quite quick so you really need to be atta paying attention so you've got the complete catalogue there of all the items you can go through this I've got this set on 240 lots per page and there's four pages starts off with a very nice mauve shop rider mobility scooter 
might be of interest to Fiona. <laughs> Better go round Sainsbury's on. Pardon? <laughs> but obviously not. How much do you value your life? Uh, relatively cheaply, really. <laughs> if I do, to be honest, I don't, I don't overvalue it. <laughs> I'm not narcissistic, you know. I mean, it's it's whatever it's worth, whatever you really give me for it. Anyway, getting distracted there by Miss Paint a lot, chipping in. All the items are there, as I say, uh, and there's this one. They've got a lot of. Uh, paint brushes, torches, outside lights, metal buckets, all sorts. Even a life-size rusty cast iron garden rabbit ornament. Now that I've got to have a look at. Sounds right up my street. Uh, bidding is ended, so obviously we're... Ah yes, it's Wednesday, isn't it? So it's the 10th, so they're actually within the first day of the auction, so they will actually be live at the minute. Um, but the bidding has ended on the nice, very rusty looking rabbit. Look at him. It's glorious. Oh, he's lovely. <laughs> a rust, rusty Peter Rabbit. I bet he went for a bit. He went for £45. Oh, I've got that um, but of course, you've got to also bear in mind there's always, always, always that commission to pay. Now, if we go back to the start of the page, on the top they also have a, a little pull-down menu that says View Auction Details. What that does is tell you the times of the auction, the viewing days, which was yesterday, and also uh, items that's got the um, commission. Uh, and the buyer's premium, including the VAT, so they've already taken into account for you on this one, is 22%. So whatever you bid, you have to bear in mind that you've got to pay an extra 22%, but that's in person. If you're bidding online, they add an extra little bit of commission because the uh, the sale room want their cut, and presumably the auctioneers have to pay them as well, so you're, you're kind of covering that as well. So the online commission, including that, is 5.94. So you'll pay that on top of the 22 so you're coming out of then you're looking about 27 28 um, percent what i always do is a quick mental calculation if i'm at an auction i just add a third then i know i'm covered because the third is is higher than pretty much anybody would charge so i know automatically if i'm if i bid 90 pounds it's going to cost me 120 uh, and, and it'll come a bit less than that but it gives me a quick mental calculation when you're in the heat of battle, as it were, that you, 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 you're not going to end up not having enough money, which would be a disaster. Now, in, in let's have a look at that. Try and find that rabbit again, because I like looking at him. So somebody bid 45 in the end. Um, they'll pay the, the, the commission on that, which can be up to, as we said, 28%, so we'll say a third, so they'll end up paying maximum probably £60, which I think for a life-size rusty... It's not a life-size, it's gigantic. Uh, it could be a very big rabbit. See, that's the thing of buying online. Well, that's the thing, you don't know. I mean, you, that's why you really need to view, because some things, you know, depending on the camera work, some things, they look smaller than they actually are, and some things look bigger than they actually are. Um, we've been cut out in that in the past. We bought um, some that they were selling, uh, I think, seven sets of, of drawers, which the description said small sets of drawers. So we assumed there was small sets of drawers. Um, we did, couldn't get to view because we didn't have time, and it was fifty miles away in Newcastle. Um, so we and we bought the seven uh, for a really, really price. I mean, they only went for I think forty pounds. I think for all seven. So we thought, ah, bargain! I'll turn up there with me jeep. We'll throw them in. We'll be laughing. 
turned up there, they were bleeding huge. I could only get two in at a time. <laughs> so it ended up costing me a lot of money to actually get them. So what I did actually, I, I, I took the three that we really wanted, the best three, and then I put the other four back into the auction, um, which you can do, but you have to pay for them first. And you also have to bear in mind that if you're selling at auction, you pay the commission as well. So the, the auction house gets it from both ends. They get the commission off the person that's put it in, they get the percentage off the selling price, and when they sell it to you, you pay an extra commission on top. So the auction houses are laughing. Anyway, we digress. We're back to this rusty rabbit. Now, when you're actually viewing, they'll, uh, let's, in fact, actually, let's go to an, an auction. Uh, auction. Let's pick another current auction. One that's not actually ended. Uh, in fact, actually, we'll go to my sale room at the top, and there's a list of all the auctions that uh, we have in our favourites because they're all pretty much within the distance that we're willing to travel to to actually view and to to collect. And um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Some of them auctions are on every week, others are only every month. Um, we have laid law auctions. If you've ever watched Bargain Hunt or Antiques Road Trip, programs like you, you'll probably all be familiar with Mr. Laidlaw. He's into his militaria. He's a Scottish gentleman always wearing uh, very smart tweed jackets. Uh, and he has an auction house in Carlisle, but it's only every month. Um, tend not to get too much from there because, as I say, he's a military specialist. And the other items they have are sort of single item lots, whereas I prefer bulk buy. You know, many items in one lot is where I prefer to be. Um, we have uh, one called Feet and Biz. We'll have a quick look at that because I know they've got one every Thursday, uh, which at the time of this video is tomorrow. Uh, That's I, where our Chelsea draws came from. That, uh, no, they were. That was um, oh, Millers. Millers, yeah. Millers in Carlisle and uh, Newcastle, in the old Rington Tees factory, actually. Um, so we'll view the one at, at Feet and Biz. Uh, again, look at that. The very first lot is an ultralight folding mobility scooter. <laughs> <laughs> you wait for one, don't you? Like buses. You wait for a mobility scooter to come up, and all of a sudden you're flooded with them. Inundated. Unindated, indeed. Very full Formula One grid of mobility scooters. Uh, so you go down, you go down, have a look at all the candlesticks, the radios, the pottery, the vases, the radio players, uh, and then you just stop randomly on an item. Uh, and a, a Spanish green glass apple in, glass in the shape of an apple. Or well, what could you want? Uh, Spanish green glass in the shape of an apple. Click on that, there you are. And on this they've been very helpful. They've actually uh, put a ruler by the side so we can see that it's about 12 inches tall. I'm not particularly interested in a large green apple, but it looks very attractive if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, but again, you on this they've got estimates. Uh, and you can see on the screen the auctioneer's estimate for this is 10 to 20 pounds. They're pretty much basing that on experience and what other things I can't imagine they've spent spe sold too many glass green apples. Never mind Spanish glass green apples. Um, but they, they 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 get a feeling, so they put a price down there. It may be too much. It may be too little. It's only a guide. Again, it's saying the current bid is five pounds, and it's already got one bid on. So somebody's bid at least five pounds on that. For tomorrow's auction. Uh, there's a button where you can add it to your watch list. If you add items to your watch list they'll go into a place on the sale room so you can keep an eye on. Because if you're going through a catalogue that's got 800 plus items you think oh yeah that's great and that, if you don't bookmark it you'll never find it again and it'll be a right and you'll spend the whole evening thinking what was it I was interested in. 
So it's always an idea, even if you're only partially interested, is to click on the, put it in the watch list, and then when you've finished going through the entire catalogue, you can go there and see which items w were of interest to you, and you can perhaps whittle it down, discount some, etc. It's always an idea to view twice even, because it's very easy to miss something. You know, you're sitting there, I've been to many, many auctions, and I'm sitting there listening to what they're selling, and something comes up, and I thought, I didn't see that. I've never seen that before in my life. Even though I've viewed, even though I've read the catalogue, you miss things. It's just inevitable. It's the way that these things work. So anyway, add, th add things to your watch list as you go along the best way. Uh, as I say, that, that auction's tomorrow. I'll probably go through that catalogue later. Um, I'll scroll down. As I say, most of the furniture generally is at the end of the, the, the sales. So you may sometimes have to scroll quite a way down or even to the next page before you start getting into furniture items. Here we go, look. Uh, let's see, that's a relatively good look. That's seven items, including floating shelf, occasional table, nester table, CD unit, etc. Now, the, the best thing about those sorts of lots is you won't get the private buyer bidding on those. You just won't, because they don't want all that. You know, so by buying in bulk, actually, you can end up getting things cheaper than if you buy them individually. You know, on that, you may only want that nice little set of drawers that are on top. The table looks quite nice. Uh, CD tower, well, who has CDs these days? Some, but not many. Um, but but that, that being there can reduce the price of the other lots with it. So, at worst, you can chop it up for firewood or throw it in the skip. Though, you know, we don't like to throw things away, particularly if they're made of wood, because you can always use them for repairs um, and, and perhaps think of a good idea for it. It doesn't have to be CDs. So they're the kind of lots that I like to see, is when they've bought things together because it stops the private buyer wanting them, and if there's some items that are just junk, you kind of put the dealers off. I mean, you're in the fortunate position that you're, you're there actually to add value to something. Because let's face it, if you're upcycling or painting something, if you're not adding value, what are you doing it for? It makes no sense. So... You are in a prime position, really, because you can add value. I mean, to be honest, sometimes I think, well, it's terrible when you see a good bit of furniture that's got a poor paint job. Um, but it's probably equally tragic when you see a good paint job on a poor bit of furniture. That's why auctions are great, because they give you more choice. You know, you can... They come around regularly, once a week at least. So you can just buy what you need when you want. And and if something doesn't come around, just wait till the next week. You know, get get the right furniture for for your style. Because you you're just wasting your talents if you put your style on a piece of furniture that it doesn't really belong on. You know, if you're doing poor paint jobs, well, maybe you need to pick a new career. <laughs> what can I say? So that's. Let's come back to that. I'll look at uh, Feet and Biz later. Shoot to the top of the page. Had we have put that that set of five pieces of furniture in, in our watch list, then if you click at the top where it says sale room, uh, again, there's, you've got all the auctions that we've favorited. Uh, so they'll always be there. It also, also tells me uh, our past items that we've won, the items that we've bid on and lost, uh, and on the right there's the watch list. It says there's five items that I've watched previously that have ended, and there's three items that are active. So they'll be coming up either later today or tomorrow for items that I've watched. So that's great. Now once you the auction comes round and you, you've c connected to it, Let's see what we do then. Let's, uh, doo -doo -doo. let's go back to Feet and Biz. 
uh, as you say, it says general collectors and fine art sale, Peterby's Auctioneers, uh, sale date is 11th of July, which is tomorrow, and it says view, oh, view catalogue, which we've just done, and above it it says connect to auction. If you click on the connect to auction, that'll pull a page up that... It got all your registered details, which is your address, your MasterCard or your debit card or your credit card. Uh, and then you scroll to the bottom and it said you've read and accepted the auctioneer's terms and conditions, which basically is if you bid, you buy. And uh, also the sales rooms, bidders, terms and commission, conditions. Uh, and then if you complete your sign up, you click on that and... Uh, uh, you've requested the general collectors and fine art sale. Unfortunately, you're currently pending approval to bid for the following reasons. Uh, and it says the auction is reviewing your re registration. So it has automatically approved that one, but it'll come back because I've bid there before, so they'll recognise it and it'll get approved later before, which is why you need to leave a certain amount of time prior to the auction. Don't wait till your lot comes up and think, oh, I'll, I'll bid, I'll register. It's too late. Cost you nothing to register. Uh, it costs you nothing if you don't buy anything. It only costs you the money when you actually bid. So that's grand. So that's that's you registered on the saleroom.com. That's you connected to that particular auction. So now you could view the catalogue, put in some bids beforehand, or when it actually comes up to the day, to uh, the auctions on. Uh, we'll go to another one because there's one currently live as we speak, which is in uh, Penrith. Uh, view that catalogue. Now, because I've actually already uh, registered for this one, I've actually brought some in earlier today. Um, it says bid live now on the top. That's because I've connected to that auction. If you connect it, that's what it'll say as well. Underneath it'll say watch auction. Now, if you click on the watch auction, it will come up with, let me just change the screen because I think it's live as we speak. Let's turn that one off and turn the window bidding on. There we go. Let's turn me off. You've had enough of me by now, I'm sure. Right, so this is the screen that you'll get. This is the actual auction uh, going live. Let me just... There we go. That's the auction going on. This is actually live as we speak. You'll be watching a video, so it won't be live, but it's live as we speak. Uh, most auctions have a video of the auctioneer and the sound. Uh, I've got the sound turned off because they've been speaking over me. Um, I'll turn that on and see whether... So there we go, that's him talking away, that's him taking bids. Now on this screen you get the, the current lot that's for sale, nice picture of it. You get the current price, on that one it's 850 and he's asking 900 so that's a very nice Victorian brass bound campaign chest, a bit out of my price league. Um, if you click on the, oh, where are we? Click on the wrong screen here, picking on the recording one rather than the actual one. Click on the picture of it, it, it gets it's a slightly larger picture, gives a description again, the estimates, it was estimated at four to 600, so they were a little bit light, but it is a very, very nice bit of furniture. Uh, not the sort of thing you'd ever want to, to upcycle because it's beautiful in its own right. Uh, on the, underneath the, the video of the, the auctioneer, talking away, taking bids, is uh, the auction catalog with the list of items. It's on the current item, it says live by the side of it, and underneath is the upcoming lots. Now, above that is a little button that says follow auction. If you leave that ticked, then it'll stay with the, the live item at the top. 
and, and even if you scroll down, once he moves on to the next item, it'll go back there. So if you want to look further through the catalogue, you need to unclick that. So we'll unclick that, and that will allow us to, to scroll on through to later items. Um, let's find something of interest. Seven oh six. Click on the seven oh six, and that's a box of five clocks, cuckoo carriage wall, etc. So it's a box with five clocks in, so you need never not know the time. Now, once you pull that up, you've got a couple of options. There is an alarm, uh, and if you were to select that alarm on, then when that item comes up live, there will be a, a siren in your computer if you've got your sound turned on and you're listening to them. You'll get a ringing bell so you, you can start paying attention because your lot is the next lot up. I'm not particularly interested in the clocks because that's too much time for me. What you can also do on this is there's a thing called auto bid. And again, that's like um, before the auction, if you put your bid in, your maximum bid, it's the same kind of thing. You put in there, the opening price of that is says a five pounds, it's estimated 10 to 20. If I said, well, actually, they're probably worth 25 to me, plus the commission. You put in the 25, you ignore the commission at this point, you put in your 25 in the auto bid and confirm. When that lot comes up, again, it'll follow the bidding up and stop at 25 for you. So if it starts at a fiver, it'll bid a fiver for you. If somebody comes in and bids 10, it'll get you to 15, and it'll keep going until you meet your maximum, then it'll stop. So it's a good way of restricting yourself to that theoretical maximum price. I always like a bit of leeway because sometimes, depending on how the day's going, you think, well, I can't go home empty-handed, I'll bid one more. Or, you know, I really like that, I'll bid one more. Sometimes I think, mm, I'm not so keen on that, I'm going to cut my limit down. So it gives you the freedom, but it is a good way of making sure you don't overspend by putting your maximum into there. So we'll close that, we can go back to follow auction and you'll see that the screen goes back to the next live item which is a Victorian mahogany three door serpentine chest, estimate 140 to 160, it's currently on 130 and is asking 140. Now that's another thing we should perhaps touch on, is when they take bids, different auction houses use different methods but as a general rule, if it's say starting at 2, It'll go 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Once you get above 10, it'll go to 12, then 15, 18, 20. It goes up in 2 and 3 pounds. Once you get above 20, you might go up in 5s. So it'd be 20, 25, 30, 35. Once you start getting up a bit more, and you certainly when you reach the under mark, you'll start taking it in 10s or 20s. So it'll be 100, 120, 140, 160. So the, the, the increment that it goes up by gets larger as the price gets more. Sometimes they may come back down again when it starts slacking off a bit. If he gets to sort of 150 and he wants 180, nobody's bid, he might say, I'll take 160 and reduce that increment again to get them extra little bit of bids because it's worth it for the seller and it's worth it for the auction house. And sometimes the, the leap is too big you don't want to necessarily go, if you set your limit at 160 and he's asking from 150 to 180, you know, you don't want to go that high. If you're actually at the auction house, bidding live, sometimes if you if you hold your card sideways on, it means I'll go off th that increment, you know what I mean? But you really need to get into the swing of it before you start getting fancy with yourself. We don't want no fancy. So, I think, uh, I think, I think that's probably about, oh, we were going to look at some of the other auction sites, weren't we? So, what we'll do is uh, bring up the other, we'll switch the bidding off, and we'll put back the auction screen, and just for your delight, we'll put me back on, and Miss Paintlot still painting away in the background, living up to her name. Right, so, here we go. 
So we looked at the sale room and the other one was Easy Live. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever used this on my big fancy computer. Do a little quick search for it. Uh, easy live auction. It works in a very, very similar manner. Uh, as I say, sometimes they, they do the smaller auctions and they certainly do different auctions that aren't on the sale room. So it's always worth checking the two for, you, for your area. Uh, again, you've got the same sort of things. It's got auctions, it'll pull up all the current auctions that they've got, uh, which you can sort by date or auctioneer. Uh, obviously the ones on the top. They also do uh, timed auctions, which is a bit like the eBay kind of system, where they put the lots up and they say they're going to end on 12 o'clock on Thursday, and bid, people bid up until that point. Uh, and then they do the normal auctions, where it's that's lots up and it's going to go now so it's always worth bearing in mind there is other types of auction on there but generally we're interested in those um, but the time ones you're worth having a look uh, again they've got uh, 171 in the uk uh, and there are auctions definitely on here that, that aren't on the sale room uh, i know one or two there's one in in anak um, there's ash auctions which is in stoke on trent which do Pottery, which is a very, very good place to buy your pottery because obviously it's made there. Uh, again, you, it's the same situation. You register, you register your card details, you go to the auction, you connect to it, you bid away. It's exactly the same. It's just worth bearing in mind that it is, there's some overlap, but generally it's a different set of auction years to the, to the sale room. So it's worth looking at. The only thing I should mention is there are also, um, what was I going to say? Let me get it. Uh, there are specialist auction sites as well, as well as these two, which are for the general auctions, furniture, antiques, etc., etc. Uh, there is one called, I think it's called Bid Spotter. Uh, Bid Spotter. Let's pull that one up and have a quick look at that one. Be a fairly comprehensive run round of the uh, auction sites. This is Bid Spotter UK. Now, these are industrial auctioneers and uh, insolvency, bankrupt stock companies that have gone pop basically. They sell them, you know, everything from trucks, JCBs, um, but they do do little bits of furniture. Um, so it's always, I just like having a mooch round. It's beats working for a living after all. Uh, and again, it's the same sort of thing. It's the same, I think they must use the same platform. Uh, again, you find your favourite auctions. Um, you visit the, the catalogues. Uh, there's one there called Asset Auctions, which are in Nottinghamshire. Uh, they've got a sale on Thursday, which is... Uh, lorries excavators plant equipment that kind of thing uh, they've got one on sunday which is uh, agriculture equipment forklifts uh, another one on tuesday which will be next tuesday i'm guessing is uh, four-wheel drive vehicles more plant hire sometimes they have auctions that are say opticians range uh, branch of opticians has gone pop so you get all the equipment they use in opticians mm -hmm. kitchens they have quite often have kitchen companies as we know they come and go almost weekly um sofas places again they're very prone to going out of business um so yeah there's all that kind of thing as well there is uh, as well as these sites that take care of all these other auction companies there are specific ones uh, very large auction companies that have multiple branches perhaps have their own uh, websites where you can there's one called uh, wilson's which i think are, are primarily based in uh, northern ireland but they have branches all over there's one in uh, daltry uh, top end of um, 
Humphreys and Galloway up near Glasgow. Um, they have one in Belfast. They have car auctions in Newcastle. Um, so it's always worth looking out for those if there's anyone that's particularly close to you. Again, they have auctions on site and they also have timed auctions. Um, they also deal with a lot of uh, police forces. You know, it's that sort of place where you find all the things that have been seized. They sell those off. Uh, they also have government overstocks, etc. They they deal with those. They also do houses and cars and all, everything. So there are individual auctions companies that run their own website and there aren't on the sale room, but, but you can still buy online from them. Uh, I think that's probably about all I can say on that. I think, I think I've covered just about every place you could possibly buy anything from. Um, so as I say, the, the general rules are always view if you can. Everything is uh, caveat emptor, basically sold as seen. It's up to you to check them over. Some some auction sites, they, they often put in the catalogue something like AF, which is either stands for at fault or as found, but it's the same thing. They, they've spotted damage, so it's up to you to go and find out what that is. Sometimes they put SAS, which is sold as seen. Um, they have to abide by the auction laws the same as everybody else so if they miss describe something you, you you are fully entitled to take it back if they say this is a, a more off vase and it turns out to be made in china etc and you find that out then you can take that back and they're legally obliged to refund you because they've misdescribed something they quite often use words like thought to be or um, what's another favourite? Uh, in the style of. In the style of, etc. Just to cover themselves, you know. Um, it's particularly important if you're buying things like jewellery. You know, you need to look for a hallmark. You need to make sure if it's a diamond ring, it is actually a diamond and not a lump of glass. Um, but generally... You'll be safe. They, they they are trustworthy. They're reliable. They're not there to rip you off because they make their commission quite readily off the seller and the buyer. So they're, they're, they're not looking to fleece anybody because they're making enough as it is. And they don't want to put people off putting things in or people putting off buying because they're cutting their own throats. So all the normal rights that you've got as a buyer you're covered basically but it is up to you to make sure that if there's any damage you spotted it because they're not legally obliged to tell you um, whether there's anything wrong with the item but they are legally obliged to tell you what that item is uh, so always view always bear in mind that there's a commission to pay uh, when they start bidding don't jump in wait till the it drops because you don't want to be overpaying from the off. I mean, they always start very high because that's where they'd like to be, but they'll always come down in generally and start the bidding at a lower level. So buy your time, but don't hesitate, um, particularly if you're online, because you've also got to bear in mind that you, you know, depending on your broadband speed, there may be a bit of a lag there. So, you know, when your lot comes up, don't be shy, get in there, get bidding. Uh, don't get auction for you, don't get carried away with the bidding, you know, set the limits with a little bit of discretion for yourself. Uh, d don't get carried away and start buying every lot that you think, you know, oh, that's cheap, I'll buy that, I'll buy that, I'll buy it. You've got to get it, you've got to transport it, you've got to store it. So, you know, don't get carried away with the buying, don't get carried away with the bidding. Um, pay attention, don't hesitate. Don't jump in straight off. And there's nothing else I can tell you, really. Um, I think that's pretty good. Now, if you've got any questions or anything else you want clarifying, then just drop a message uh, to Miss Paintlot. 
don't forget to subscribe to her YouTube channel. Generally, she's either painting in acrylics or pastels or showing you some fancy technique to, to decorate things. I'll be popping along now and again just to fill in the gaps uh, with some more basic information on life. Uh, if you've got any questions, if you have any furniture that you, you need repairing or you can't quite work out what to do with it, then ask away. I've probably spent about 50 years of my life taking things apart and about 40 years of that putting it back together again. Um, so I've come across most problems, you know, whether it's what screwdrivers to use, what glues to use, how to get off varnish, how to get off wax, how to clean something up, how to French polish. I'll probably be able to help you. If not, I'm sure I'll know a man that can. So that's all now. For See you next time. Bye.